Make me eight years younger and 80 pounds lighter. Fire me out of the next vagina so I can burn it all out at both ends again. Don't be a slave to your perception, just the thought. Saving it all, the greatness for the man who lives on victory or the woman. Keep your heart open, mind open. I want nothing. I can fix my own problems. I don't have a weak and wounded soul. I only have a gritty warrior's war cry. And I ride madly and furious into battle. I am no weak, ignorant child, just a full-grown, toothful lion. My main roar makes the hearts of humanity tremble. Keeping balance in this concrete jungle cracks in fear of my backbone. And this poem is all about her, all about the furiously fantastic woman. Excuse me, Beer Burke. It started with a spark, snap, laugh in the light, fine-fingered freedom females, foxy phantoms, and you should fear not being true. Are we alive? Not scared meek mice, but mighty mountains planted among thousand-year-old poppies. Fools, we are free. Saunter into the abstract joy and be held in reverie of my love and respect. Become the family you always wanted. We want to bend and sway to a fat, dirty trumpet and grind, snapping together verbally. We want to stay up all night drinking and fucking. We want to live off our own goddamn art and live well, I say. Yes. All those pretty memories melt like water under a burning bridge and softly smolder with another ember. We want to live forever as amber. And mostly, we want to walk awake into a 3 a.m. sunset where the night just burns it down again. We want to love without being lonely, an unending flowing pen. We want arms that never end and intellectual orgasms over being brief existing organisms. Sometimes when it's late, the night quietly forgets how free it is. She tried to come to her love with hands full. Life worship dancing around her fingers aptly at the ready to heal and love. And he only bought, brought his own misery, and it lay between them a bated breath, smothering joy and will. She wore that love, wiped it across her chest like a war medal, but it only melted away a sugary gash, bleeding out salty tears in a sterile bathroom, and her mouth wore her brazen shame while lying later with her eyes. last little piece and it's uh, <clears throat> if you've ever had a stalker you can probably relate this is called the Avalon Hotel room 110 when someone you used to love is harassing you your mind is initially shocked at the abrupt change you consider all the promises they made when you still love them you take an inventory of promises you itemize the kept versus unkept the words versus action. It becomes a sickly list of words unspoken and deeds undone. As the harassment escalates, the acts of non-contrition, your mind begins to doubt your safety and you have checklists. Did I lock all the locks on my doors and windows? You check your back seat before you open the car door. You look around while walking your dog, exercising your peripheral in ways it hasn't moved before. At this, po at this point, most people become an emo have an emotional reaction and become frenzied. While I stuffed it down, the emotions of guilt for adding to the homeless population, stuffed down the sorrow for losing a confident and lover, breathed in the quiet in my house because he was not ever coming inside again. The first night was 2 a.m. beating on the door, wailing woeful to please let you back it, let him back in, begging for a jacket, anything to manipulate you into opening the door, embarrassed that your neighbors might call the police. Then your resolve becomes stronger and you get angry. You close off your chest, you tell your mind it's going to a better place and that being alone is better than absorbing someone else's reality. You start loving and valuing yourself to a level that it deserves. You become the self you can be alone with. Your self-loathing becomes self-loving and you swear to never, never settle. 
You drink a lot of tequila and try to OD on tacos. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs>